Hello. In this video we are going to understand the global financial crisis of 2008. Imagine you're playing a game with your friends where you trade toys. Now, let's say one day, everyone wants to trade for a special toy that you have. Because everyone wants it so badly, they offer you a lot of their toys in exchange. You start feeling really good, because you have so many toys now. But here's where things get tricky. Some of your friends who traded for your toy didn't have many toys to begin with. They had to borrow toys from other friends just to make the trade with you. They thought they could get more toys later to pay back the ones they borrowed. Then, suddenly, some of your friends realize that the toys they traded for aren't as valuable as they thought. Maybe they break or stop working. Now, they're stuck with toys they can't use, and they can't get their borrowed toys back. Because those friends need them too. So, everyone starts worrying that their toys aren't worth as much as they thought. They stop trading because they're afraid of losing more toys. This makes it harder for everyone to get the toys they want, and the game slows down a lot. In the real world, this is kind of like what happened in 2008. People were buying and selling things, called houses, but they were doing it in a way that wasn't very safe. Some people were getting loans to buy houses even if they couldn't really afford them. Then, when the value of the houses went down, those people couldn't pay back their loans. This made banks and other big companies lose a lot of money, because they had given out those loans. Because so many big companies lost money, they stopped lending it to other people and businesses. This made it harder for everyone to buy things, or start new businesses. People lost their jobs, and it was really tough for a lot of families. The government had to step in and help out by giving money to some of these big companies to keep them from going out of business. They also made new rules to try to make sure this kind of thing didn't happen again. So, just like in our game, the 2008 financial crisis happened because people were trading things in a way that wasn't very safe, and when things went wrong, it hurt a lot of people. The 2008 financial crisis was one of the most significant economic downturns, since the Great Depression of the 1930s. It was triggered primarily by the collapse of the housing market bubble in the United States, but its effects rippled throughout the global financial system. Here's a breakdown of the key factors and sold as mortgage-backed securities MBS, to investors. Subprime lending and mortgage-backed securities MBS. Subprime mortgages, which were loans given to borrowers with low credit scores or unstable incomes, became increasingly common. Mortgage lenders, eager to capitalize on the booming housing market, relaxed their lending standards and offered these high-risk loans to borrowers who may not have been able to afford them under normal circumstances. Many of these subprime mortgages were bundled together by financial institutions and sold as mortgage-backed securities MBS, to investors. These mortgage-backed securities were supposed to spread the risk of default among multiple investors. Securitization and derivatives To further spread risk and create new investment opportunities, financial institutions engaged in the securitization of mortgages. This involved bundling large numbers of mortgages into pools, and then selling securities backed by those pools to investors. Additionally, complex financial derivatives, such as collateralized debt obligations CDOs, were created, which were essentially bets on the performance of these mortgage-backed securities. These derivatives amplified the exposure of financial institutions to the housing market. Credit rating agencies Credit rating agencies, such as Moody's, Standard Amp, Poor's, and Fitch, played a crucial role in the crisis by providing ratings on these mortgage-backed securities. However, they failed to accurately assess the risks associated with these complex financial products. Many of the securities received high ratings, leading investors to believe they were safe investments, when, in reality, they were exposed to significant risk. Lack of regulation and oversight. Regulatory oversight of the financial industry was inadequate to prevent the proliferation of risky lending practices and the creation of complex financial instruments. The repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act in 1999, which had previously separated commercial banking from investment banking activities, contributed to the erosion of regulatory barriers and allowed financial institutions to engage in riskier activities. Additionally, regulatory agencies such as the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, and the Federal Reserve failed to effectively supervise and regulate the financial industry. 
taxes. Many financial institutions engaged in risky behavior and excessive leverage, meaning they borrowed large amounts of money to finance their operations. Investment banks, such as Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, and Merrill Lynch, were heavily involved in the securitization and trading of mortgage-backed securities and derivatives. They also relied heavily on short-term borrowing to fund their operations, leaving them vulnerable to liquidity crises. Globalization and Interconnectedness The interconnectedness of the global financial system meant that problems in one part of the world could quickly spread to others. Financial institutions around the world held investments in mortgage-backed securities and derivatives, and the failure of one institution could have ripple effects throughout the entire financial system. Additionally, the globalization of financial markets facilitated the rapid transmission of information and contagion. Trigger Events Several events acted as triggers for the crisis. The collapse of the housing market bubble led to a wave of mortgage defaults and foreclosures, particularly among subprime borrowers. As housing prices declined and mortgage-backed securities lost value, financial institutions faced massive losses on their investments. The bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, in September 2008, was a significant turning point in the crisis, as it highlighted the extent of the problems in the financial system and caused a loss of confidence among investors and counterparties. Government Response In response to the crisis, governments and central banks around the world took unprecedented measures to stabilize financial markets and prevent a complete collapse of the financial system. These measures included bailouts of troubled financial institutions, such as the Troubled Asset Relief Program TARP, in the United States, liquidity support provided by central banks, interest rate cuts, and fiscal stimulus packages, aimed at stimulating economic growth. The 2008 financial crisis had far-reaching consequences, including a severe contraction of credit, a collapse in housing prices, a sharp decline in economic activity, and widespread financial turmoil. It led to millions of job losses, a wave of foreclosures, and prolonged economic hardship for many individuals and families. The crisis exposed weaknesses in the global financial system and prompted calls for regulatory reforms to prevent similar events from occurring in the future.